When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness, and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die, because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned, also thou hast delivered thy soul. And the hand of the Lord was there upon me, and he said unto me, Arise, go forth into the plain, and I will there talk with thee. Then I arose and went forth into the plain, and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there, as the glory which I saw by the river of Kiba, and I fell on my face. Then the Spirit entered into me, and set me upon my feet, and spake with me, and said unto me, Go, shut thyself within thine house. But thou, O son of man, behold, they shall put bands upon thee, and shall bind thee with them, and thou shalt not go out among them, and I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth, that thou shalt be done, and shall not be to them a reprover, for they are a rebellious house. But when I speak with thee, I will open thy mouth, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, He that heareth, let him hear, and he that forbeareth, let him forbear for they are a rebellious house. My foray into the truth community and my attempt to become more involved in it brings with it problems because we have foundational philosophies that are fundamentally opposed. The truth community essentially, albeit unwittingly, I think, although not in all cases, is founded on the teachings of Lucifer, while, of course, he is the adversary of the Lord Jesus Christ. But even knowing such a matter, I think it has to be recognised by my brethren that the Lord Jesus Christ is far more powerful than Lucifer. So really, we we have nothing to fear and everything to gain by spreading the word of God within the truth community also because these are people these are upright people in many cases these are clever people these are not fools by any measure and any man who thinks so should really beware of his presumption they are very many cases kind-hearted people and caring people and they have many qualities indeed and it is an abomination to turn away from them and to disown them they are our brothers and sisters they also have many things to teach the process is not one way. Any teacher who presumes to teach must be also a student willing to learn. I have said this many times and it's not well received by the teachers, but I'm afraid it's absolutely true. It's absolutely true. Oh, teacher, you should be learning and there is much to be learned. 
So we're not going into the community from a lofty place and speaking from on high or anything like that. We're going into the community from a humble place of no knowledge, merely of the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, which we must, of course, profess. But whether there be any need for preaching or sermons, I don't really think that would be at all helpful. We've had too many of these things. Let our actions and our words speak for themselves. Let us be curious and trusting. When I did my Reiki session, I prayed constantly throughout it. We have prayer. I prayed for the person who was giving me the treatment. I prayed for protection for myself. And I prayed for understanding to spread throughout the entire assembly that was being held while the Reiki session was in progress, which was a New Age assembly of various different types of arcane teachings, and some of them very practical, some of them more questionable, but nonetheless certainly of interest. Um, this is, this is, we need to come together and the people in the truth community have repeated this, and they are quite right about it, actually. Even the, the um, ecumenistic movements in religion, they do have a point. The Protestant movement is split into so many factions, and this, uh, brothers and sisters, this fact is used by the Catholics to show that it is a false religion, because they will claim that Catholicism has preserved unity among the people of God, well, while we have split into so many factions. So anybody who thinks that they're in a faction, I would really strongly advise that you examine your principles carefully. Carefully, indeed. We are the children of God. We have one adjudicator, one mediator between God and man, the man Christ and Jesus. That's all we should be looking to. And this is really the basis of our faith. And we will live in communities. We live already among the heathen. And we need to speak to these people. We need to embrace them. Have understanding for their fears and ideas. Because the word of God will spread and will penetrate to every corner of the universe. To every corner of the universe. It's in the hands of God. But God will only move when his servants start to move and start to speak the word of God. And to practice the word of God. Reaching out to our neighbours in love and in humility. Willing to learn from them and not to simply tell them what they must or must not believe. It is an individual matter. It is an individual matter. It's in the hands of the Lord God. If the Lord God would enter into any man's heart or to any woman's heart and move him or her and speak the truth, Bring them to the seat of repentance. To kneel before the cross, then this is in the hand of God. It's not in my hand. What ability have I? This is the point I was attempting to make. That coming into the truth community then is going to be disruptive. It will be opposed. It will be opposed. Uh, by spiritual powers because the word of God is always opposed because Satan, Lucifer, whoever, you, whatever name you wish to use understands that he cannot stand before the word of God. He cannot stand before the word of God. He fears the word of God because the word of God will banish him and therefore there will be spiritual opposition. And the only way to counter spiritual opposition is with the word of God. And the word of 
God is sharper than any two-edged sword. We are told this, it will have effect, it will not return void, and God will use our efforts and our faithfulness and the love that we try to share always imperfectly because we speak not from any high place we will try to share as we do in our communities and with our, our um, heathen neighbors that worship strange gods we need to come from a place of understanding to these people and hear their story not assume that they are misled although they are indeed misled according to the very word of God but as we have all been misled it's a perfectly natural state it's a perfectly natural state there is no guilt attached to it we are in the process of discovering what is real and what is not. And we must subject our own views to the same scrutiny. Don't expect to get a free pass because you said it's in the Bible. You will be told all sorts of things amongst those people. These are, these are uh, thinking people. May the word of God be spread throughout all the land in peace and unity and love, in thy holy name. Amen.